Well, I'm up here at uh, Hilton Bay in Brafferton Angling Club's Fordingdon stretch, the horseshoe bit, a bit at the top. Pegs 1 to 30. I'm going to have a look at that today. I made one oh, a number of years ago, but it, uh, it needs redoing. So that's where we're at. So I've come up the uh, Fordington Lane, past most of the buildings, and on the left hand side is a parking place for anglers. You see my car parked there, the concrete area. And on the door in front of my car, there is an honesty box where you can buy your day ticket. There are other ways of doing it, but I'll, I'll put look at them later. But this is one way of doing it. So there's my car. There's a big barn there with some massive straw bales in. A little barn to the left of it. And you go through that gap in between. <laughs> Jeez. You would never know it was there. So you come through this gap and there's a nice new gate on there. It used to be an awkward, a really awkward gate. But uh, that's a lot better. And there's usually horses in the paddock beyond this little gate. And uh, they're interested, but they're not normally, they're not normally a concern. So I've come through this little gate, and down there, opposite, is another little gate. Again, it used to be an absolute pig of a style. <laughs> it was a terrible thing. Anyway, we'll go across that. Well, I've arrived at this next gate. Oh, I'm very smart looking. And the river is just there, where these bushes are. So I'm going to have a look at the whole thing, this whole top end. It goes round in a great big horseshoe, right away over to those bushes over there, right away around, and right away up to there. But rather than follow the horseshoe round, I can make my way across the horseshoe gap, as it were, <laughs> cut it out all that, and then come back down the horseshoe and take the video as I'm coming back down. So that's so I'll make my way up here to the very top of the uh, Helper B and Brafferton Angling Club's Fordington stretch. Peg one. So there is Fordington, and I've just come along this. Uh, path alongside this hedge. At this time of year, with the vegetation being low, it's, it's quite easy. The crop not having grown again, it's quite easy. But, uh, at least in the summertime, <laughs> it, uh, it can be quite difficult. Anyway, I've come to the end, and obviously, to get to the river, I'm going to have to cross this crop. And this brings me out at uh, peg six. So I'll, uh, I'll make my way up to peg one, which is where those big trees are there, and then come back down. Now at this point, there's one of these power lines again, where you go over this stair. So obviously you have to be careful if you're carrying a long rod upright. <laughs> And there is a sign here, overhead oh, electric cables, no fishing past this point. Um, and I think it means between this point and that sign over there. In other words, no fishing under the wires. Well, the fence that used to be here disappeared. <laughs> you just walk straight through. See where the style used to be, but that's gone. This is the upstream side. Where those big trees are is the top. You can see how much flooding you get here. There is the river down there. 
and the tide line is up here in this field <laughs> where all that rubbish is. I don't know how far that is, but it must be nearly 30 feet. So I'm right at the top of the stretch where this beck comes in. And you can see the river swell. And here is the peg one marker. Now it's easy to see today because the vegetation is very low. But when all this vegetation gets up, that will be <laughs> that will be covered. Hey, let's go down the river and just have a look and see what uh, the stretch looks like. So here is the river swale, and opposite is the Cundrell Hall stretch, the bottom end of the Cundrell Hall stretch. But here, there is a little platform which you can get onto at the moment. Well, that's a bit of a struggle. So maybe more of a struggle getting back up, but there we are. And that's looking down a stretch there. And it swings right around to the right to make its way around the big horseshoe. This is peg two, huge bend, very wide and very deep. Willows opposite. That's a wonderful looking peg that, if you're into barbel. It really is. There's some big barbel in here. Chub, big pike, and the usual small dace, roach, gudgeon, and very every now and then you get bream, but not very often. And peg three is halfway around the bend. Again, wonderful peg. You see there, uh, Fordington over there. Peg four, where the bend finishes, and the river brings us straight out for not for very long. <laughs> so peg four is just above the wires, and peg five just downstream of the wires. Not many really features on the opposite bank here. Oh, peg six. See how low the river is. <laughs> I'll just go down there and have a look at that, I think. You can see here where members have been clearing some willows to make it an easy cast. So we get a bit more clearance. And this is peg seven. Yeah, all being opened up. Uh, um, a little bit of uh, erosion by the floods there. Peg eight. Make your way down there to the river again. It looks very nice. So that's the end of the hedge. The footpath I came along. So I'm coming down onto the horseshoe now. And this is peg number nine. Again, just on the outside of this bend. A tremendous amount of water to go up there. Lovely. I mean, the crop is very low. This being just the first week in May. Hartley Pool just fallen to the Conservatives today. Uh, and the backside vegetation 
obviously gets very high as well. So although it's easy walking today, um, if you're carrying a load of gear in the summertime, it can be uh, quite difficult. But uh, there's some wonderful pegs up here. And this is marked as peg 10. Hmm. I think it's that upstream bit there. Peg 9 is on the other side of those willows there, so I think this is peg 10 down here. There's the peg 10 marker. <laughs> Maybe it's down here. Peg 10 is a very popular peg. Uh, anyway, go and have a look at it. So this is peg 10. Some geese over there. This little tree here. Overhanging it. Which is a bit, might make casting a little bit difficult. But it's very deep. Peg 11. Look at your chest in nettles. Once these nettles get up and fight your way through down there. But it is worth doing. It looks a lovely peg. Looking back upstream, I'm standing here at the peg 12 marker. Takes you down there. On the inside of the bend as the horseshoe begins to turn round. Peg 13. There's a sort of cattle drink on the other side there. At the moment, there are just sheep and geese in the field. But, but, uh, very often there are cattle in there, big cattle. Usually a big bull with them, but uh, maybe there's been a change in farm policy. But yes, that's a lovely, easy peg to fish. 14, right at the very far end of the horseshoe. Again. And nettles are only about six inches high, they'll be, <laughs> they'll be four feet high inside a few weeks. But you know, very open peg, and opposite, of course, you've got this sort of willow in the water. The sort of place that Babel like to hang out round, but also a very snaggy sort of place. But, uh, yeah, you get big barbel in there. Well, coming up to peg 15. Yes, yeah, very similar to 14. Probably a little bit more pace on the water there, actually. Obviously, a little bit more shallow. Peg 16. Peg 17. Yeah, I'll go and have a look down there, I think. There's willow lying in the water, which will create a nice crease, a bit of a slack in front of you. But uh, above you, the uh, willows meet at this point, which is a bit awkward for casting. You could probably do the trim. Just a little further down from peg 17, there's a wide open space here which hasn't got a peg marker on at all. So I assume if you're fishing 17, you could go down there and fish it. Wide open, beautiful. And peg 18. <laughs> Again, this was always a popular peg, peg 18. So it'd be worth having a venture down here. See what there is. Well, a big sandy bank. 
The lovely willows opposite. A nice piss on the water here as well. Yeah. 19. I've always liked Peg 19. There was a heron just gone there. But the older you get, <laughs> the less you want to walk. But, uh, And there is a platform there. Man, it's very deep in front of us. <laughs> you wouldn't want to slip off it. And uh, of course, you're only going to need an extra couple of feet of water in, and that's going to be covered over. And again, the cattle used to come down there and drink. Just to see. River swings left, beginning to wake its mare back down towards Fallington. And you've got those willows in the water there again, the sort of the place Barbara like to hang about. Peg 20 again, nice peg. On the inside of this bend. Peg 21. Yeah, worth having a look down here, I think. Flat my backside. Oh, again, some willows lying in the water there. Bit of slack in front of you and be a good crease. Some willows opposite there. Nice easy cast. Lovely. And pig 22. Getting down to the more popular pegs now, they aren't so far to walk. <laughs> and uh, the river is just swinging round, making its way back towards Fallington. And again, you've got lovely willows opposite there. Nice, easy cast, wide open peg. Yeah, great, great place. Yeah, another lovely peg, 23. And go and have a look at it. wide on the inside of this bend deep and the horseshoe straightens out and makes a right turn to go downstream. It's a very wide expanse of water to go out here. Easy cast. Just to point out where I've been so far, I'm on pick 23 at the moment. I've started those big trees over there. I just followed this line of willows round the horseshoe. And back to this point here. Make our way down to 24. And here we are at Peg 24, not very far. Lots and lots of uh, Jack by the Hedge, lovely flower. A food plant for the orange tip butterfly. I've seen a few while I've been walking around here, but <laughs> they don't stay long enough to video. So this is 24. <laughs> More water there than you know what to do with. You see the farm buildings where my car is behind. Reflections in the water. The nice thing about Fordick there is, you get fantastic big skies. Lovely sunsets, but with it being flat and open, it can be a really bleak place to be. <laughs> but today, it's wonderful. So, probably 40 yards downstream of Peg 24 is 25. Very, very similar. 
Except you've got a bit of open bank there on the far side. But again, you're on this bend where it's swinging right to go downstream to the Fordington bottom end, which I'll look at another time. This is 26. Again, continuing on around this uh, right hand bend. Steepish bank and uh, willows opposite. Slack in front of you there, a bit of a back eddy you can see. This is marked as Feg 27. Is it there on this side of the willow or is it downstream? I suspect it's downstream. Where this marker is, oh, there's another marker here, it says pick 27. <laughs> one there and one here. And again, this is obviously a popular peg. You can see you've got all up there to go at. As the river swings round to the right, it goes down over those shallows over there. I came down from those uh, buildings there and saw that gate and I went right up to the very top of the stretch to peg one and I've come right away around the horseshoe and I'm back down here at peg 27 now the other three pegs are in this stretch when you come through that gate you have to go downstream <laughs> so 28, 29 and 30 are down there I go and have a look oh. Just from making my way downstream on this little footpath. And there's a marker on this falling down fence, peg 28. And another marker there. Again, you'll never see these. Once this vegetation is up, these things will disappear. Well, this peg has always been very steep. See there? It's very popular because you've got all that water to go up there. And not too far to walk. It's really the first peg you come to. When you go through that gate, that little gate at the bottom of that paddock, if you turn left, you come to this peg, it's only a matter of yards, really. A lovely view down there. I'm just coming down through there. And here on this fence line is peg 29. And some noisy geese behind. And again, it's a lovely peg. All that water to go out, those shallows gradually approaching. There's an orange tip butterfly there. Just make my way across this, uh, this pollard. Continuing downstream. Over another sort of culvert. Here we have peg 30. So there's the peg box. Come down this steep bank. You can make your way along to that little platform there. And here you've got this giant willow tree which has fallen in. It's been here a long time. But you can cast downstream from that platform towards the shallows and this is again a popular peg this so this is the last of the pegs on Fordington 
top stretch help me in Bruford and Anglican Club Fordick and Horseshoe stretch. There are 30 pegs on here and we've had a look at them all. Anyway, just as an alternative, rather than making my way back up to that little gate and going across the paddock, you can continue down here. And it takes you back up onto the road. So we'll go that way and then walk back up to the car through the village. I think all of these Yorkshire rivers, when they're in flood, you get the erosion. This, but this is a particularly bad example here at Fordington. Huge section of the bank has collapsed in, into the river down there. So as I'm coming downstream, hit this fence, and there's a, a new style over here. This leads to the Fordington downstream stretch, which is another video, a totally different video. I'll come back and do that another day. Up there you can see Fordington Grange Farm. And uh, turn left and make my way back up onto the road. It's always a bit awkward getting over that style up there. Anyway, let's have a look. Anyway, somebody's been along and clipped the hedge and uh, looks as if they've sprayed it with a roundup. So it, it will be the usual wilderness. You have to fight your way through. You look better. Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> the stars gone. People just been making their way over this fence, but I suspect this is all going to be repaired. There will be a style there. And there is the sign. The tickets must be purchased prior to fishing. On the end of the video, I'll, uh, I'll explain how to get day tickets, where you get them from. There are quite a number of places, and you can get them online. And I'll just make my way back up the road, past the houses. There's all the buildings there, where my car is parked. There we are, I'm back at the car. It's set a couple of hours, that's all and uh, just turned it right, because looking at that over there, we're about to be dumped on. If you arrive at the river and you haven't got a day ticket, this is how you can get one. In the honesty box, or at daytickets.co.uk. Well, there we are, Fordington top end. Figures 1 to 30. Anyway, see you again when we do Fordington bottom end. God willing, take care. Bye-bye.